Shalom, shalom, baie hartelijk welkom by Koffie met die Koning. Ek is so blij om vir oogend met jou bykie te kan deel oor een wonderlijke program wat ons vandag hier het en ek het een fantastische gast wat vandag iets met my gaan deel wat ook met jou gedeel word, maar so dat ek ook iets kan leer. So die program gaan weer eens in Engels wees vandag om na baie mense is wat luister oor Seese lande ook wat in Engels luister en, uh, maar jy kan ons Engels praat, ons praat sommer mengels, so in die land, you know, everything goes, so lang jy kan, een bykie kan verstaan, is alles terecht, maar ek geloof jy gaan vandag so geseen wees door dit wat jy hoor, my gast is Eidi, Eidi, very welcome this morning, Thank you. and um, I trust that we will have a good conversation Absolutely. here, and uh, that many people will just be totally blessed by Thank what you. you've got to speak into their lives, because she is actually a trauma counselor. And there's a different word, what is it called? Support. A trauma support. Now, there's so many people with trauma going through traumatic situations at this moment. And I'm so happy that I, I have somebody that experiences this on a daily basis um, firsthand. And so this is like really coming from the horse's mouth, if we can put it in that <laughs> way. <laughs> but from the mouth that can really <clears throat> speak truth. And, and as a believer in Jesus Christ, she knows that there's no way that she can do what she's doing and offering the help that she's offering to people without having Jesus in her life. Because, I mean, I won't be able to talk to people all the time that's in difficulties and going through horrific situations and traumatic situations without knowing who Jesus Christ is in me. And I'm so happy to know that A.D. is one of God's choice daughters that he also chose for such a time as this in his kingdom. So I speak blessing and favor of God over her. You are just welcome this morning around this table with Coffee Mary Quinn, and we are having our coffee. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And let's enjoy our Coffee Mary Quinn, and I trust that you at home have also got your cup of coffee ready, ready for action. I've got some extra coffee if you would like to come over for the cup. I'm ready here. At the end of this program, there will be a telephone number with AD's telephone number on there, and she has given permission that you can call and speak to her and she will give you all the details and whatever is involved around this trauma counseling. So, Father, we just thank you so much that Jesus this morning is seated with us around this table. I'm so grateful that God is always with us. And even when we sit around this table, he's just smiling upon us right now. And he's smiling upon you because he knows that you're going to enjoy this program this morning and that you have need of what she's going to share because I have need of it first and then you will get it. So may you be richly blessed. Enjoy your coffee with the king and also what ad has got to speak to us this morning. So A.D., hearty welcome. Thank you. So let me start off by telling me what is an a, what is a trauma uh, counselor or a trauma support. What really, what does it entail? Okay, a trauma support person is somebody that goes into a situation where something traumatic has happened. Yeah. The trauma can be, you get five different kinds of trauma. It can be a minor incident. Mm -hmm. It can be smaller incidents, and it can be recurring incidents. Okay. So the most common trauma at the moment that I'm dealing with is gender-based violence. Oh, where okay. I had a situation early hours of this morning where one of the um, hospitals in Cape Town called me. Um, a student from overseas had come here yeah, for two weeks to learn to speak English. And not speaking English well, the student decided to walk from... Cliff Street to Salt River. Oh my and on goodness. the way there, she was talking to her mom on the phone and she then got robbed of the cell phone. Then another guy came with a knife to try and steal her backpack. When they fought that one off, another guy, two guys came, they threw her to the ground. They've stolen her stuff. It's traumatic. She's in a strange country. She can't speak English. She knows nobody. Wow, that's terrible. So I went in and 
we spoke about it with a translator and they then had to leave to go to another hospital to do a CT scan because we suspect she might have concussion. We don't know what injury she's got. Then you get the cases at Stellenbosch University where students aren't coping. Yes. So we then also get called into the university where you go and you assist the students and you normally find that exams or a student is coming to this big world. Yes. Parents are far away and they're not coping. Yes. Because high school and university is not the same. No, definitely not. So the students then start thinking bad because they're going to lose bursaries, they're not learning, they're not doing what they expect to do. So then they become suicidal or they become depressed. Yes. So you've got to go in into that case, which is another different kind of trauma where you've got to help the students. Yes. And you've got to try and tell them you're worthy. Don't don't look at yourself down. Then you also get the trauma where you have, I had incidents over the weekend where husbands beat up wives. Sure. Um, husbands are separated, they're getting divorced, and then they meet somebody and they think it's the person and then the person takes over and attacks them, beats them up, or they've been with a partner for many years where the partner all of a sudden had a good time, got drunk, and they they suspect that his drink was spiked. Yes. And he beat this woman up to, you You don't want to know what she looked like. So there's those kinds of trauma. And in that case where that other woman was beat up, she, when I contacted her a day later, she said to me, I'm having flashbacks. And that's what happens. Sure. They get You get flashbacks. You get yes. depressed. You get emotional. Last night, early hours of this morning when I was at the hospital, this young lady said to me in, in her broken English, why am I crying? Yeah. Why am I crying? I feel so bad. I, it's my fault. And it's not always your fault. Fault, yes. It's not your fault. You're coming into a strange country. Yes. It's different. What you can do here and what you do in your country, it's different. Yes. So the people get educated. But even, you're not even coming from that, people go to out and to pubs and they meet people thinking it's a nice person. Yes. And when they get out there... Oh, no, things happen. Yes. And the girls are being attacked. And it's, it's not, I can't put it through an age group. It's, it's varying from your teenagers up to women in their 70s mm. that are attacked. And oh, it's just goodness. you've got to be vigilant. But there's help out there. You don't need to go through this alone. Yes. There's people like me and other people that, that can help you. Yes. We're there for you. Because trauma takes a long time to get over. You don't yes. get over it overnight. You don't yes. wake up tomorrow and it's gone. Yes, I it's believe. It's going to be there because it's going to be in the back of your mind. Yes. It sits in the small brain. We call the perpetual brain in your head. Yeah. And you might forget about it, but as years go on and other things happen, the carpet builds up. Yes. And it builds up. And when it gets to like the top, and something stupid happens, like you drop your cell phone or you yes. walk into a cupboard and you explode. Yes. And it's because you've never dealt with the trauma that you've gone through okay, all your life. Okay, I see. So you need to deal with your trauma. If you go through a traumatic situation, there's places out there that can help you. There's people out there that can help you. Companies have in, taken contracts with companies that I'm affiliated to where they offer that for the, the staff. If there's been a robbery at work or somebody at work has got ill or something's happened in the office place. Yes. They call us in and we go in and we speak to the people. So yes. the trauma is there. So even if you own a company, you can contact me. I'll put you in the right direction on where to go to. There is help out there. Yes. For schools as well. There's a school that I'm affiliated to as well where one of the learners, a young learner of 11, was knocked down by a car and he was killed. And, sure. And from the student, the pupils saw this. Yes. They're traumatized. Oh, terrible. They're Horrific. having panic attacks. But parents put it down to it's asthma. It's that. It's not that. <coughs> People, you need to learn about this trauma because PTSD is real. Mm. Post-traumatic stress is real. Your, your EMS staff suffer from PTSD because they are traumatized and attacked all the time. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean because you wear a uniform or you're driving an ambulance or a fire truck that you're safe. Yes. They get attacked. I mean, last weekend there was a thing on the news where one of the leap officers was killed and they're wow. looking for the killers. Yes. We there or they there or I'm also part of the EMS that... We're there to help you, not to, to do it. And then yes. you're going to destroy this. And then it, when they know the help doesn't come, then you, you moan and groan. Mm. But you're putting them through trauma. They're also people. We're also people like you. Yes. But trauma is real and there is help. People don't sit and think no one is there to help you. I'm talking to whoever's watching me now. There is help out there. And you don't have to be, be proud. 
and say, I need help because that's how you're going to get through it. Yeah. Now tell me, you said that there were, that there were five different kinds of trauma. <coughs> trauma that so, so you get the big T, which is, happens to a single incident like last night. Yes. It's a single isolated incident. Then you get the little small T that happens to a series of small incidents. So it can be financial stress. It can be abusive. It can be verbal abusive at home. Yes. It can be children that are on drugs, like that. Then you get your chronic or repetitive, which happens, and it happens occurring. Okay. So it's like when your son or daughter <clears throat> or partner is on drugs or alcoholic. Yes. And it's recurring trauma that they put you through because when the drugs is there, then the, especially with the drugs, then the kids want money and then they traumatize you for the money. Yes, yes. So that's that one. And then you get the insidious trauma which happens to exposure of a lot of trauma over a long period. Mm -hmm. And you get complex trauma, which happens with multiple events. So you could have been in a car accident. Um, you could have seen a pedestrian being killed. You could have had financial trauma. You could have had abusive trauma. Yes. And all that is the trauma that goes into yeah. it. So it's not just isolated to one incident. Oh, okay. So, so would you say that <clears throat> in the days that we are in now, um, do you also have to deal with young children yes young children that uh, you know where the mother and father is now getting divorced and uh, they don't know how to deal with it and you do get that you get you, you get that, that situation also that. and where the children also do things um because maybe they see their father beat their mother or vice we've, versa we've also found if you go back into talking to to parents and you you would or people that have been abused and you go back into it, you'll see that a guy's father abused the mother. I had a case last week where the, the father of the partner of this lady, his father used to abuse the mother. So yes. he thinks it's the right thing to do. And if you go back to that, the, the mother-in-law told her that her father-in-law did the same. So it was the grandfather doing it to the grandmother, okay. the father to the sure, mother, so and now the son thing. to the wife. Yes. So it's a thing. You've got to break that curse. Yes. It's a curse. You've got to break it. Yes. Somebody's got to stand up and say, yeah, to no further. So this woman has got the stage. They're actually from Gauteng, where she got this partner to go to see a psychologist and go for counseling. Okay. Because she said, it's either that or I'm gone. Yes. After 15 years. Yeah. And he's realized what is wrong. So he's now going for counseling. Yes. Now, what what would you say? What is... Um, if, if, if you now begin to talk to somebody, where do you where do you go with the person first? Okay, so what you do is you go in and you find out, especially now with the, the GBV, what happened? I wasn't there. Tell me what happened. When you find out what's happened and you start unpacking the... Yes. Where were you? What, what did you do? What time was it? Like yes. unpacking. So like last night, this girl was telling me exactly what happened. Yes. Until she couldn't remember. And then once you do that, then you start unpacking pieces and asking, how do you feel? Mm. How did you feel at that point? And then from there, you unpack it further. You can't always say to the people, can I pray for you? Because you don't know what their religious yes, background exactly. is. Yes, exactly. But when I go in there, I ask the Lord to cover me with his blood and to protect me. Yes. And to give me the words and comfort that that person needs to hear. Yes, that's wonderful. So that's sure. how I go in. When I leave the house and I climb in the car, Lord, put your blood over this vehicle. Yes. And take me safely and be my words and... Be the mouth that you want me to speak yes. to encourage this person. Yes. Because at that time, they, they, they're so traumatized. I mean, they don't remember. Yes. So also with trauma, they teach you that the first 24 hours, people are in shock. Yes. Did it happen? When did it happen? How did it happen? Yes. And 24 hours later, reality starts to fit in. And when reality fits in, that's when you need to be there. Yes. Now, do you also, uh, I want to call it minister, you know, speak to people uh, that were in uh, accidents, for yeah. instance. Yeah. Do you also on get Sunday, calls? On Sunday, I was at Lagoon Beach for the two soccer players that ran. Where was that? On Lagoon Beach, there was a team of soccer players that went to play soccer. Mm -hmm. And the ball went in the water and two, two young men went after the ball. At the lagoon, there is a horrific riptide at Lagoon Beach. Yeah. The riptide took is them that here close? Uh, Milnerton. In Milnerton, okay. And it took them out. I couldn't counsel the family. I had two scenes, so I had to get assistance. Yes. Um, so we had two scenes. You can't, the, the mothers were hysterical, and there's nothing you can do. Yes. So once they've calmed down, I've arranged for a cause of speaking chaplain to go 
and assist and do debriefings at the school because that's what they need. Yes. That's what they need. Sure. And to assist the families. Yes. Wow. So this is quite an interesting job. Yeah. It's so I do it in two stages. I'm also with the, the fire department with the chaplaincy where there you go to house fires. Yesterday there was a mother and a daughter that burnt in a house in Strandfontein. Sure. Um, so that's the kind of trauma you also got to deal with. Um, you've also got to deal with your EMS staff because, like I said, the vehicles get stoned, they get mm. attacked. When there's horrific scenes of bad accidents and stuff, then we go to the scene and then we go back to the fire department or to the ambulance space or to whatever EMS. It's generally the fire department and you do debriefing with the staff. Yes. Because they also suffer from the trauma. Yes, obviously. They also suffer from the trauma. So you need to kill it, talk about it, so that it doesn't build up and build up and build up. Yes. But now uh, one question on a personal line. When you... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, but let me first ask, what interested you in this topic? <sighs> 20 years ago, um, there was a friend of my, two friends of mine that... The organization started in Cape Town in yes. 1999. And 20 years ago, they had an open day. And my late father was with me at the open day. And he went and paid the money for me to do the training course. <laughs> and when he left on the Sunday, he gave me this envelope. And he said, you need to be in Epping on Friday. And I said, why? He said, I paid for you to do the training course. Um, in the beginning, I was a bit skeptical. I went through the psychological interview, which was nerve-wracking. I passed all of it, and from there I just grew a love for it. Because yes. if I can touch one person, my job for that day is done. Yes, because it, you must have a love for people. So people used to ask me, what do you do? And I would tell them, for money or for fun? Yes. Oh. This is my passion. Yes. I, I live it, I love it. Just to, like last night, I walked out of the hospital, I touched somebody. Yes. Yes. Somebody felt better. Mm. Somebody wasn't suicidal. Somebody felt better that there is people out there that care. Yes. There is people. You don't have to walk alone. Yes. And I always use my testimony on the song or the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Because if it's not well with my soul, I can't help you. Yes. So it must be well with my soul to make your soul well. Yes. And that's how I do Yes. It. And now when... <coughs> Pardon, now when you have dealt with people mm. in, in, in difficulties, like in their traumatic yeah. situations that you've dealt with now, so when you come home tonight, how do you deal with your, with well, your Lordy, day? I, with my day, being I, with that I'll people. thank the Lord and then I've got a wonderful friend and family that I can speak to. Yes. And if it becomes too much, I do have a confidant that I go to. Oh, I, can okay. pick, I can pick up the phone any time and speak to him. So Yes. Because that one needs that, you need right? To, you also need to offload. Yes, it's, yeah. You're taking everybody's stuff in, but you <clears> need to offload yourself. Yes. But it's it's a very challenging and it's very rewarding because you can see where you could have somebody who's wanted to commit suicide. Yes. Where you've actually saved them. Yes. And there was there was a thing in Woodstock where um, I heard about a guy that was walking across the bridge, and this story touches me a lot because he he left this morning that morning. And he said that if I walk over this bridge and nobody greets me or nobody talks to me, it's my sign that I must jump off the bridge. Mm. And a little 10-year-old walked past, hello, uncle, how are you? Wow. And it saved his life. Yes, that day. That's so, you wonderful. know, it's little things. You don't know what the next person is going through. You don't yes, know what you mean yeah. to them. I mean, just by saying, I'm here sure. for you, you're not alone. Yeah. It's just maybe what you, whoever's watching this, this broadcast, that's what you need to hear, that there is somebody out there. Yes. I'm not alone. There is people that can help me. There's people that care. Yes. And that might, might just be what that person needs to hear yes. that they don't end their life. Yeah. So were you born in Cape Town? No. <coughs> no. I was born in Johannesburg and I moved to Cape Town in 1998. Okay. 98. Mm. All right. So you've been around with this. Uh, um, was this your first uh, job no. situation? No. 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 I'm actually a bookkeeper by profession. Okay. <laughs> so it's totally different. It's totally different. That's wow. totally different, yeah. Yeah. So when I was working, I used to do this after hours. Yes. And night calls and weekends. But now that I'm flexible and I, I work in a ministry with a very good friend of mine, I... Yes. That's fantastic. More flexible. So, <clears throat> so if there's somebody out there that you want to uh, maybe say whatever you want to say... You feel you want to encourage the person, you know, whatever. I follow the body care system, and the body care system says, I am with you. I'm one step behind you. 
I'm to the left and I'm to the right. But when you need me, I'll step up and walk beside you. Okay. And that's what I just <clears throat> want to say to anybody who's watching. And also that, you know, the Lord is there. And Isaiah 43 verse 2 says it so well. When I walk through the fire, don't be afraid. I'm with you. Yeah, that's a wonderful scripture. Say and it again. Give it to us Isaiah again. Isaiah 43 verse 2. When you walk through the fire, yes. I am with you. I'm yeah. beside you. So whoever, whoever's sitting there at this moment thinking, I'm alone. There's nobody out there. Yes. There's people out there that can help you. Contact me and I can put you into directions of. Yes. Because when we go in for the gender-based violence, the hospital does intervention. We do intermediate and then we refer. Okay. There's organizations out there that can help you. Yes. It's confidential, so you don't have to worry that it will get out to anybody. What you tell us, your information, we don't share because of the Poppy Act. And for yes. that reason, I can't tell you who I'm with yes. and what organizations. One of them is a religious organization, which I was with on Sunday. Um, but unfortunately, I can't yeah. divulge names Yeah, and no, stuff. we understand that. And we yeah. don't want you to go there. Anyway, so I want to just say to those that have watched as I listened now, it's a great encouragement to know that there is somebody out there. Because I remember in my young life, there were many days of my life that I felt just so empty and so lonely, so rejected, so not accepted, that I wish that I knew then that there was somebody that I could go to, somebody like AD that I could maybe just pick up the phone and say, can, can you come and see me? Uh, I need to talk with somebody. And so... You know, from my young years until now, there's, there's such a lot of change that has come and a lot of help that is offered to people that are, um, you know, struggling because of situations like gender-based violence and, you know, uh, uh, marital pro problems or whatever. You also deal with that, isn't it? Yeah. That's because that's also very traumatic. Yeah. Uh, for, for many people. You know, some people say, oh, and I don't care. Gender-based violence is not, or assault is not only for women. Yes. I've had cases with men as well. Yes, yes. So it's, it's across, there's no such thing as like with domestic violence, oh, it's always the woman that's there. No, it's not that. No. It's male, female, kids, everything. Yes. With, with GBV. It's, it's a big, big, big thing. Yes, because um, not uh, so long ago, I was also uh, speaking somewhere and then <clears throat> I was calling actually the women forward, not thinking that men would come out. But suddenly before I knew it, there were three men standing yeah. there and they said, we are also going through a divorce yeah. and we are also, uh, uh, you know, not the guilty ones. Exactly. Our partners have decided that they're going, taking somebody else mm. in our place. So we also need your prayers, you yeah. know. Yeah. So that's a very good encouragement to hear mm. from you that, that men can also contact you yeah. to, to tell their yeah. story and to talk and about I, it. I don't even have to do face-to-face. -face. We do um, FaceTime, what, WhatsApp video calls. Yes. We do Skype calls. We do Zoom calls. So okay. no matter where in the country you are. But like I say, I've got contacts right around South Africa. Yes. Would you like to pray for somebody? Okay. So, Lord, we come before you this morning. And that person that's broken, that, that yes. broken vessel out there, we just ask that you'll heal the vessel. Yes. Put that vessel together, glue it with your mighty powers and just encourage them, Lord, and let them remember what we've said in this broadcast. Yeah. And I just ask you for that woman or that man or that teenager yes. that's sitting there thinking today, what do I do? Lord, just touch them. Be yes. with them. Comfort them and hold them close to your bosom because you are the great healer mm. and only through you all things are possible. Yes. And when we walk through the fire, you are there. And also remember Psalm 121 verse 1. I lift up my eyes to the hills and where does my help come from? Yes. It comes from the Lord who created heaven and earth. Amen. And we just pray that you will remember this, think about it, mm. and know that we are praying out there. There's prayer warriors out there. There's teams of prayer warriors. And we just pray that you will be touched and listen to the voice of God. Yes. Knowing that you're not alone. Because our Father is with you. But your, our Father has equipped us to be with you. Yes. Amen. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for watching. The time just goes so quick. quickly. There's so many questions that I still want to ask, you know, and there's such a lot of um, 
<coughs> information that you carry with mm. with you. But yeah, unfortunately, this is how it is. Time is not always on our side. And so I thank you for watching this morning Coffee with the Quinning. And uh, I trust that you will make yourself a nice cup of coffee again. Sit down, listen again. And um, you that are out there, I know that the right people have listened this morning and that you are encouraged by this message. I pray that God will just richly bless you and um, let us have a coffee, coffee with, with a Quinning. Quinning.